Good morning. Today is uh, Tuesday, the 16th of August, 2022. Tuesday in the week of Trinity 9. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, bolstered by 1662. And that means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace... <sighs> I'm sorry. Ah, let's start again. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship, and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Israelites who came out of Egypt knew the Lord as Savior and Shepherd. 
and yet they hardened their hearts. They would not hear his voice, and so they did not know his ways, and they did not enter into his rest. These things, says St. Paul, were written for our examples, uh, for our admonition, uh, that we not um, fall into the same traps. Psalms for the 16th day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 439, Psalm 79, 80, and 81. Psalm 79 is a lamentation over the destruction of Jerusalem, the prayer to God to restore his people. And this is a prayer, uh, you might say, allegorically, uh, for the church in its restoration uh, and uh, for the soul, tropologically for the soul. Um, that it may be rebuilt from the destruction uh, wrought by uh, the enemies of the soul. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled and made Jerusalem a heap of stones. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the air, and the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the land. Their blood have they shed like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no man to bury them. We are become an open shame to our enemies, very scorn and derision unto them that are round about us. Lord, how long wilt thou be angry? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire for ever? Pour out thine indignation upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not our old sins, but have mercy upon us and that soon. For we are come to great misery. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O deliver us, and be merciful unto our sins, for thy name's sake. Wherefore did the heathen say, Where is now their God? O let the vengeance of thy servants, blood that is shed, be openly showed upon the heathen in our sight. O let the sorrowful sighing of the prisoners come before thee, according to the greatness of thy power, Preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And for the blasphemy wherewith our neighbors have blasphemed thee, reward thou them, O Lord, sevenfold into their bosom. So we that are thy people, and sheep of thy pasture, shall give thee thanks forever, and will always be showing forth thy praise from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 80 uh, uh, continues this theme. It's a, an Advent prayer, or an Advent psalm, a prayer to God to stir up himself and come and help us. The very theme of Advent. And a lamentation uh, also over the destruction of Jerusalem and a prayer for its restoration. Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, Show thyself also, thou that sittest upon the cherubim, before Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, stir up thy strength, and come and help us. Turn us again, O God, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry with thy people that prayeth? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them plenteousness of tears to drink. Thou hast made us a very strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, thou God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou madest room for it. And when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it. And the boughs thereof were like, a good, like the goodly cedar trees. She stretched out her branches unto the sea, and her boughs unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedge, that all they that go by pluck off her grapes? The wild boar out of the wood doth root it up, and the wild beasts of the field devour it. Turn thee again, O Lord, thou God of hosts. Look down from heaven. Behold and visit this vine. And the place of the vineyard that thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest so strong for thyself. It is burnt with fire and cast down, and they shall perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, 
and upon the Son of Man, whom thou madest so strong for thine own self. And so will not we go back from thee, O let us live, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 81 is a challenge, a, a, a summons rather, to celebrate uh, God's goodness and his uh, great gifts in, in a festival. It's also a challenge from God to the obedience of faith. Sing we merrily unto God our strength. Make a cheerful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take the psalm, bring hither the tabret, the merry harp with the lute. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, even in the time appointed, and upon our solemn feast day. For this was made a statute for Israel, and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony, when he came out of the land of Egypt, and had heard a strange language. I eased his shoulder from the burden, and his hands were delivered from making the pots. Thou calledst upon thee in troubles, and I delivered thee, and heard thee what time as the storm fell upon thee. I proved thee also at the waters of strife. Hear, O my people, and I will assure thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any other God. I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and let them follow their own imaginations. Oh, that my people would have hearkened unto me. For if Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have put down their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. I would have fed them also with the finest wheat flour, and with honey out of the stony rock would I have satisfied thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 22nd chapter of the second book of the Kings. We resume our reading of Samuel Kings, the history of the uh, kingdoms, Judah and Israel. The Israel, of course, the northern kingdom is now history, having been overcome and deported by the Assyrians. Judah, the southern kingdom, remains under, uh, still ruled by kings in the line of David, uh, but it's really uh, departed very far from uh, from David's example uh, in in uh, the previous chapters immediately previous to this. Manasseh and his son Amon proved to be um, uh, the most uh, aggressive um, paganizers and uh, apostates and um, uh, opponents of um, Israel's religion from within. And then uh, comes to the throne a uh, young, the, n the next one in line named Josiah. And uh, this is a famous passage about the rediscovery of um, Scripture, uh, a passage which had great resonance, especially for the reformers in the 16th century. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Dida, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. So very much at odds with the pattern of his father and grandfather, and indeed uh, many before them. And it came to pass in the 18th year, and, and so this is, that's I think a sort of summary statement, and this is the story you might say about how that was, or how that was uh, came to be. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah, that the king sent Shaphan the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshullam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, 
that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered to the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work, that of the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord, to repair the breaches of the house. And to carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. So a program of uh, building uh, restoration is underway at the temple. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Sign of grief, sorrow. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Milkiah, Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah, a servant of the king's, saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all that is written uh, unto, uh, concerning us. So just a, a side note here. Uh, the book is often thought to have been Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the great uh, teaching on the covenant, which explains both the uh, benefits that the covenant brings Israel, but also its obligations and the blessings which follow faithful obedience to the covenant and the disaster, the judgments which follow disobedience. And uh, that is, uh, Josiah has heard that book, realizes that uh, Judah may well be fully liable for those punishments and now is looking for some uh, specific confirmation uh, from God concerning this. Back to verse 14. So Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam and Akbor and Shaphan and Asahiah went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to wrath, provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which hath sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, he was not hard-hearted, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and that I shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon the, this place. And they brought the king word again. Here endeth the uh, first lesson. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, 
praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the uh, 35th verse of the 15th chapter of the first epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. And this is a familiar passage to Anglicans who attend funerals. Uh, it is um, the uh, conclusion of Paul's great testimony to the resurrection hope. And how appropriate we read it on the day after the feast of the Dormition, which is a, a kind of celebration of that hope as well. Uh, so he's, uh, so far here, he's made the point that resurrection is integral to the Christian religion, that, uh, it, the Christian religion falls apart if there is no resurrection of Christ and if there's no resurrection when Christ comes again of the dead. Uh, and now he deals with the question of the nature of the resurrection body. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, made to live, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed its own body. So he's making the point there's a, there's both continuity and discontinuity between the body that is sowed like a seed in the ground and the resurrection body that will be raised from it. There's, there's, a, there's a transformation uh, between uh, even when they're the same uh, body. Um, verse 39. All, and this passage is not usually read. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which is Christ, was made a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man, Adam again, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption... And this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And that's Isaiah 25, verse 8. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And there, um, uh, Hosea 13. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, 
My beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not in vain. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess our faith in God, renewing the pledge and commitment of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, as members of one body, let us commend ourselves and each other and those for whom we pray and the whole church and body of Christ uh, to his most gracious and uh, loving care. Bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, for its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love, and for its mission and ministry in all the world. I bid your prayers for this country of ours in all countries, in their peace, order, and good government, and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, the faithfulness of their witness and worship, their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity. Bid your prayers for the uh, uh, those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers for those who are recovering from surgery or undergoing it, for those uh, in palliative care, for those facing the challenge of sobriety, debilitating infirmity or illness, chronic pain, cognitive impairment. For all women in childbirth, all women expecting children, and the children they're expecting. For orphans, for the abandoned and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for prisoners and captives, for the fearful and the wounded and the grieving and the dying. Those with cancer and its therapies, those and those uh, uh, dealing with anxiety, depression, mental illness, for caregivers and healthcare workers, all doctors and nurses. And for those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ, uh, rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day that safe, being kept safe under the protection of the divine providence, uh, guided by his holy word, strengthened by his holy spirit, 
we may in all things serve and please him and be renewed in the likeness of his son, that when he comes again in glory, we may be found in him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee the Spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of heaven, uh, danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God's promise to Abraham is that his seed will be more numerous than the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. And I think of that promise and its fulfillment in Christ and in the gospel and in the church when I read um, that that verse from 1 Corinthians 15 uh, about there being one glory of the sun, this is verse 41, and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. Um, is And I can't help but think that the glory of the sun is, of course, the glory of Christ himself. The glory of the moon is the glory of the Virgin Mary, who uh, is transfigured by her own son's glory. And then we've got the glory of the stars. And the stars, of course, uh, so, uh, you know, immense in number um, and uh, placed there for the greater lights and the lesser lights. Um, and uh, every uh, uh, Christian soul departed this life in the faith of Christ, uh, taken up into that glory, uh, shines like one of those stars in the firmament um, and uh, uh, adds to the splendor and, uh, and beauty um, of God's glory revealed, uh, not just in nature, uh, but in the world to come. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his perfect will.